Hello everyone and welcome to the first ever Volcano Quick Edit video on this channel. To edit this long exposure shot, I will be using Adobe Photoshop with the Camera Raw Editor. And actually there is not much to do, but I want to add a little more detail, restore the shadows and let's also see what I can do with the highlights. So without much more talking, let's go. As I said, I'm using the Camera Raw Editor for the base adjustments. This can also be done using Adobe Lightroom Classic, it's just a different user interface. First off, I'm going to change the profile to Adobe Landscape. This will change the colors quite dramatically, as you can see the blue tones are being boosted quite a bit. And also, you can see we got some problems between the red and blue tones in this cloud up there. This will be fixed later, for now let's adjust the white balance. I do want to make everything a little warmer to prevent too much of a blue color cast. So I just boosted the temperature a bit. The exposure does look kind of okay. We don't have any under or overexposure. Although of course right there we don't have much detail and I'm not sure if I can fix it. Overall I want to brighten up this image so I'm boosting the exposure. Then I also need to drop the highlights. I can actually drop them all the way down, I think. All right. Now let's also add a little bit of vibrance. And at the same time, I'm dropping the saturation. All right. As you can see for the basic stuff, there isn't much going on, but let's switch over to the local adjustments where we can fix a few more things. First off, I'm using one graduated filter for the foreground. And that's because I think there's still a very strong blue color cast going on that's easily fixed by simply increasing the temperature. All right, now it seems to be a little more on the purple side down here. So I'm also going to drop the tint. And this way I'm getting way more natural colors in here. All right, of course we can also boost the exposure. So we get more details from those shadows, just like that. Then that's it for this area. Now I also have added a few radial filters and let's go from top to bottom. First off, I want to enchant the details in this cloud here because I think they look really, really cool. And the way I'm doing this is by simply pushing the clarity all the way up. This looks really awesome, but I can also add a little bit of texture maybe some contrast and I could even boost the highlights here. Okay, that's nice. I'm not 100% satisfied with the colors, so I'm also dropping the temperature here just a bit. All right, now let's try to fix the colors in this part of the cloud. I think here it would be helpful to have a little more temperature. And you can see how the bending between those two colors was slightly raised to the top and got less visible, I think. So that's a good thing. Still, it is visible, but I'm going to continue fixing that in the HSL panel later. For now, there's one more radial filter in the center part, just above the volcano. I don't care too much about the highlights. I think this way it looks strange. So I'm going to boost the highlights some more, even risking overexposure but I personally just think it looks much better this way. Now let's further introduce contrast by bringing down the shadows. All right, and then let's reduce the texture and the clarity in here. Nice, and finally I want to adjust the color temperature, making it a little colder in there. Perfect. That's it for the local adjustments. Now let's do a little bit of color grading. I want to start in the curve tab. To be more precise, I want to use the red curve and just introduce some more red tones to the highlights by pulling this upper point further to the left. Just like that. I don't want to overdo it, just a little bit. That should be enough. Now in the color mixer, let's first go through the hue panel. In this case, I'm going to drop the red tones then let's boost purple. 
Let's also boost Magenta. Okay, then let's head over to the saturation. Here I'm going to drop the reds. I'm also dropping the orange tones. The green tones just to be safe, although there aren't much green tones in here anyway. And I'm going to drop the magenta tones as well. So I don't want to lose every color. That's why I'm boosting the blue tones. I think it just looks way cooler this way. And then let's see, I can also boost the yellow tones. All right, nice. That's quite a difference. And you can see the bending here is pretty much gone. Perfect. Now I'm also applying some split toning through the color grading tab. Here I'm just targeting the mid tones and I'm applying a very, very warm color here. Somewhere in this range. And let's bring down the saturation, of course. But that looks really, really good. Now, finally, in the calibration tab, all the way down, I could play around with the blue primary hue, depending on if I want to reduce this purple color cast. I think I want to do this. Let's not add any saturation, just reduce the hue though. All right. And then let's head to the details tab and just sharpen this shot. Okay. And then let's open it up in Photoshop. So there are quite a few people around which I want to remove from the shot. I think this guy right here can stay because it looks quite cool with him in it. But for the rest, I'm going to use a spot healing brush. And I guess I can just brush over those guys. And let's see, I think I want to try and dodge this image just a bit. So I'm adding a new layer, switch the blend mode to overlay. And as usual, I'm going to use the TK panel plugin to select specific luminance ranges. Here, let's see, I'm going to select the midtones. And thus, let's apply this layer mask to the new layer. I'm grabbing the brush tool, set the foreground color to white, and I'm just brushing over the foreground, which I want to brighten up. Okay. That was just a bit, but I think it's much better. Now, next. I'm not sure if I want to add any glow here. I think I just skip this step and go straight for the Nick Collection plugin. So first off, I have checked the polarization effect, but it's just looking weird. Next, I want to see what the skylight filter does. And this will just make the image a little warmer. Again, this is kind of a heavy effect. Maybe I'm adding a little bit, just a very subtle amount. So let's just keep it at that point. And then let's add another filter right away. And let's check the Brilliance Warm filter. Again, I think this is just too much. So I'm skipping this one for now. Maybe the Glamour Glow could work here in this case. But I actually just want to have it in the center, so I'm adding a control point for this one. All right, this works. Then let's see, maybe I'm adding one more filter. This time I want to use the total contrast. Let's first reset it back to zero though. And now let's slightly boost the midtones. Here you can see this works really, really good for the cloud. So I think I'm going to apply it like this. Let's hit okay. Okay, awesome. I guess I still want to mask out a few areas here. So let's add a layer mask, grab a black brush, and now I'm just getting rid of a few things here, especially on the right side of the cloud. Maybe down here as well. But this looks really, really cool. And let's merge those two layers. And I just noticed there's some kind of very subtle vignetting. I'm going to fix that using the clone stem tool. All right, nice. That's it for editing this volcano image. So I hope this was interesting and helpful. If you have questions, as always, feel free to ask in the comments. And thank you very much for watching this video.